a quick introduction. Myself, I am Sart Rowe. I'm working with Northwest Justice Project on lsntap.org to put together a series of remote work webinars. Um, this is the second to last one. We've got one more coming up on how to do security audits. Uh, we have today with us Miguel Willis of ATJ Tech Fellows. Super to have him here. One of the most incredible people in the community at getting law students involved in legal aid organizations. My last year of law school, I was looking for an internship for myself. Miguel Willis crowdfunded and went to competitions and funded 10 of those for different students and has been doing that every year after year since then. So he's got extensive experience working with law students, placing them in legal services organizations, some of those remote and some of those um, in person. Wonderful, super happy to have him here today. Well, it's definitely a pleasure to be here today. And i um, definitely looking forward to this discussion and conversation and uh, hopefully yep. to hear from uh, some of uh, you all. And as, as we walk through this stuff, Miguel, at any time that you've got um, extra tips before we move to your presentation, please just jump in um, with yeah, those. We're gonna sure. uh, start kind of chronologically. Excellent. Um, onboarding, uh, setting things up to be successful from the very beginning. Uh, make sure that you've got all your agreements in place, your confidentiality agreements, your expectations, which we've got a separate section on this, all of your HR documents, your bring your own device policy. Uh, we have a sample bring your own device policy that's over on lsntap.org, but especially with remote work, that's one of the most important. And then however you are doing timekeeping, whether that's through your case management system, whether that's through something uh, that is free, some way for your intern to keep track of that time so that you're able to sign off on that, whether they're getting credit or not. This is also a great opportunity to introduce your intern to your digital signature platform put all of these documents up on the digital signature platform right after orientation, have them digitally sign it, but turn it into a two-way experience. Have your intern write up what their expectations and their goals are, and then give them the access to put that up directly onto the digital signature platform so that you sign off on it and you see it. It, this could even be a way to use whatever your online collaboration tool is to go back and forth over those goals or expectations. But that onboarding process needs to include both all of the required HR stuff, but also a way to get those expectations and ground rules there for moving forward. Any other any tips that you really have on that onboarding process? Because I know you've done some like intensive stuff before individuals even get to organizations. Uh, yeah, just I think communication is key. Definitely, uh, you know, just take the time before you kind of get to the substantive matter of the work to just establish a call with the uh, student that you're working with. Just, you know, an informal web and, uh, you know, uh, chat, virtual video chat, just to get to know them, break the ice. Um, and Definitely in terms of, I think you hit everything in terms of HR, make sure you have that start date, uh, make sure you have all the information. I think one thing uh, some students have, well, they will uh, have like credit. They will receive credit for their externship or internship. Make sure you have all of that information. Uh, also, some students have additional funding or stipends. Um, I think that's something that you'll want to clear out uh, with, you know, see how that works administratively with the function of, of your HR. Um, tax implications of their, you know, pay. Uh, it's something that uh, you'll want to explicitly communicate to that student, uh, whether that student will be a 1099 or W-2. I think it's really good to get that information out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, a lot of internships or fellowships have things that the supervisor must do in order to move payment forward for a law student. And the last thing you want is them missing rent. I mean, it's gonna give them some housing experience, but it might not be the most positive one at that point. Um, IT support, get your IT team involved. 
Um, if you do not have an IT team, then make sure that there is somebody who is put as their um, case point individual. Uh, with IT in particular, have a list of all of the technology that they need to install at the very beginning or that they need access to. Um, how do you edit legal documents? Is that Word, which is most common um, in the industry, or do you use Google Docs, or do you use some open source um, option that's out there? Uh, security, we're gonna cover more in depth coming up. Um, case management systems, make sure that they have the access that they need at the level that they need. Um, online access to records uh, here in Washington State, um, that often means getting someone access to Tyler's Odyssey and making sure that they have a way to access those things. Uh, do you have examples, form letters, brief banks, places that the intern can look to learn from the work product of others? How can they get access to that? Uh, and then how are you doing document sharing? Are you sending back and forth full drafts? Are you using Box or OneDrive, some type of secure online um, system for that sharing? Just a one page list of all of the technology that they should start to familiarize themselves with. And on that technology list, uh, list what it is, list why they need it, five or six words, the link to where they can get it, and then who they go to for support if something doesn't work. And I would have after this a second group of practical things related to real cases to use each piece of this technology because if they install it on day one and they need to use it on day 45 if they haven't already practically used it they got to start over and if yeah, it's yeah. just a hypothetical it doesn't work as well it needs to be something practical yeah, and i would just add uh start that uh most of the companies or software vendors and solutions they have demo vid videos and a knowledge library definitely uh provide access or information in terms of routing that student to where they can learn demos. It, it, it makes no sense to create this, your own <laughs> uh, demo of how, how they can use the solution if there are already great examples and demos out there, uh, just to save that step. Uh, sometimes uh, individuals will uh, kind of assume that because you're dealing with uh, the millennial generation, uh and and kind of tech savvy interns that uh we just understand every piece of technology so uh it's good to provide that extra advice so there's a question about the um links to the documents on lsmtap.org um, when we get to miguel's presentation i will grab those links and add them into the chat uh, additionally, there are four handouts that are available here. There's a copy of the presentation uh, as PowerPoint. There's tips for telecommuting. Um, there's a goal chart and supervisor agreement sample. And there's a written evaluation for student performance. Those three samples are actually samples that um, we used from Seattle University Law. They have an externship program that I was an extern in and that now my, my nonprofit firm also uh, participates in, and they have wonderful examples out there. Um, they have a social justice mission and are very active in placing students in legal services organizations. Uh, video, set up a way to talk with your um, interns via video. Face-to-face um, -face video, the simplest solution that I'm strongly recommending at this point is Zoom. Um, Zoom did have some security concerns about two months ago. Um, Zoom has worked very actively in taking care of those security concerns. Um, if individuals are interested in setting up their own video server, Jitsi is another alternative. It does take a, a techie to it. Um, but and then familiarize them with those security options so that you can lock the room so that nobody else uh, randomly appears into it. Um, that option is now even available on their free platform. Uh, also talk to the courts and see what they're doing with regards to video. 
Um, some of the courts around here are actually using Zoom to do meetings, and some of those are open to the public. Um, court call is the most prevalent technology that I've seen used in the courts, and there are some courts that are allowing individuals from the public um, to attend those hearings. So if there is a way to access or attend a hearing, one of the first things that I did with in-person um, interns was always send them over to the courthouse to go look at the housing docket, to go look at the family law docket, spend a day or two just going to court and writing up summaries of what they learned and questions that they had related to those cases where they didn't know what was going on. If there was an objection and they didn't understand why, that type of stuff. So many courts or some courts will allow members of the public to um, come into those video conferences that are going on in a spectator role. So call your court, ask, um, contact them via email. The wait lines can be a really long when calling, but make sure that they still get that practical court observer experience out there. Other tips on video, Miguel? Um, you know, I, I like to just suggest that uh, when scheduling meetings, and I'll, I'll kind of touch on this uh, in, in my presentation, but make make sure that it's it's easy, it's simple to schedule, uh, you know, video chats, video calls. Uh, for for my organization, I I, I use uh, Microsoft Teams, as we, uh, but Zoom is really great, right? Uh, and you have a, a, a several other really great solutions. I think uh, there's definitely uh, a lot of options in terms of uh, good solutions, but make sure it, that it's very easy to set up a meeting. You wanna provide that seamless touch in terms of, you know, if, uh, if you need to have a regular check-in, if you need to sync up for, uh, you know, to troubleshoot, if uh, a student needs to troubleshoot a problem that they're dealing with, uh, with 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 Microsoft Teams, you just schedule in your calendar, add the meeting, and boom, it's it's easy, and and that should also be connected to your calendar to make sure that the student has access uh, to your calendar to know when you're available. So I think that that collaboration will definitely help uh, create less fraction in terms of uh, scheduling times to chat and, and times to uh, sync up with you. Uh, there was a quick question here on how to download the handouts. Um, in your control panel, there should be a handout um, area under like audio and dashboard, those uh, particular areas. Um, if it is not appearing, click on view and look for handouts. Um, we will also post them on the blog post that follows with the tech. Um, you can also email me, start at inclusivelaw.org, and I can email them to you directly. If you have additional um, handouts or resources that you think would be useful for the community, please drop me an email. I will add those to the blog post. Um, the handout feature on GoToWebinar is limited um, to five, uh, so we just grabbed the first few that um, came out that were very relevant, um, but I know there's other useful resources out there uh, for the community. Next thing is uh, collaboration. We just hit on Microsoft uh, Teams. It's definitely a wonderful way to set up a collaboration space. It gives you channels. You can get a lot of your discussion out of email and into a more uh, productive area. It's got super strong integrations with other Microsoft uh, products, so it's very, very easy to use in those particular environments. Uh, Slack is another wonderful option that is out there. The paid version does add kind of the video collaboration um, as part of that, but making sure that you have a collaboration space the same way that you may have used a conference room to get together with a few people is essential for having a strong intern experience and getting them involved in things. Make sure that you also have project tracking, some way to check in all the time on where projects are. I've got two suggestions here, both of which are free. Kanban Flow is a wonderful project management system based on agile project management. It has to-do lists, to-do list today, the progress 
when it's done, you can assign it to individual people and people can make comments on it. It can all be found in one place. It's very graphical and very easy to use. Additionally, though, you don't need a high-tech solution. Uh, for years before moving to Kanban Flow, I just used Google Sheets and just created a very easy spreadsheet um, that had task, project, next action item, who was in charge of it, and then an area for people to discuss or mention their pain points. And I could just pull that up at the beginning of each day with each intern and see, oh, uh, Raquel is stopped on this. Michael needs help here. And it gave me a very easy way to check in on projects. Having kind of due dates as part of it, very, very helpful. Yeah, definitely. I'll just echo everything you said. Uh, <laughs> Google Sheets is, is great. I use Google Sheets. I actually use a, a, a similar tool called Quip, uh, mm -hmm. collaboration, document collaboration, sheet collaboration. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. The simple, the better. Sometimes I use Trello, uh, but with having access to the sheets allows you to do a lot of the same thing. Uh, and also just, you know, you're able to rapidly create those sheets, download those sheets, disseminate those sheets uh, with little trouble. So. Yeah, and Carlton mentions here that Teams also has the ability to do uh, live captioning as part of it and integrates really well with Outlook. Great point there. Uh, definitely something we're thinking about is the accessibility of the tools that you are recommending or using. Um, it is, it's essential that you have accessible tools for your interns. Communication, set up a way, set up different forms of communication. Um, I strongly recommend Signal um, as a way to text message back and forth and have a less formal uh, way to communicate. It is secure, it is free. Uh, WhatsApp is another alternative um, that is very good, but having different ways to communicate and different expectations for those types of communications. Um, in the past, I have had a few um, interns that have um, seeked out and added me on Facebook. Um, I would prefer not to do um, legal uh, confidential stuff there. Um, I move those conversations over to a secure private way to communicate. Um, set clear boundaries when you set up an internship, especially with regards to time. Um, create deadlines for each thing, even if that deadline um, is an artificial deadline. Maybe the blog post that they're putting together over a particular topic needs to be done by the end. It's much better though to have an artificial check-in point um, before that and a concrete deadline um, so that those things don't just, everything gets pushed off until um, the end. Create solid office hours. This is something that tends to fall away when you have the remote work situation. Uh, but the way that I try to help enforce those solid office hours, and I don't really mean enforce because once you get to know your intern, maybe you need them or not, but it's creating a initial schedule um, is to have at least twice daily um, set meetings. I do one at the beginning of the day uh, before I get started on anything formal, and then one of those at the end of the day. And I recommend setting up one or two other meetings that are larger, like group meetings that include other members of the team that are done on um, Zoom or some type of collaborative platform. But just having that end cap and beginning to the day helps a lot. Once you get to know your intern and their work style, then you can add the flexibility there, um, figure out are, are they available on weekends but may need a day or two during the week um, off. Once you're able to establish that the check-in process, that deadlines are being met, then create a environment that works with their schedule also but that initial scheduling can be very important for setting expectations. Uh, security, 
uh, essential when you're working with remote workers. And a lot of us are, we mentioned the bring your own device policies, um, have a policy that relates specifically to um, having antivirus on their computer. Um, give them a link to a particular antivirus. I would recommend it being the same antivirus that you use in extending licenses to them. Yes, there are some free options out there also. Um, also essential to have a password manager. I know anybody who's been to past presentations, uh, almost always does password managers make it into them. And it is absolutely essential. When you're sharing passwords, having a way to share that password, that password automatically be updated, and that password be removed at the end of the internship so they no longer have access. Things like LastPass allow you to share the passwords where they cannot be viewed. Well, technically, they can be viewed. That feature is not extremely strong. Um, I would recommend changing those passwords after an intern has had access to them. Um, LastPass, there is a free version that allows um, anyone to receive passwords shared with them and to share out with one other person. You do have to upgrade to a premium or a Teams version in order to share with multiple people. I recommend that the supervisor have a premium or a Teams version and that all of the interns at least have the free version. One of the nice things about using a um, Teams version though is it also gives you some information on are they creating um, secure passwords and some management stuff, but it's essential to at least use the free version. Um, LastPass has always been free at that bottom tier, and 1Password has recently um, gotten rid of their trial limits, so their basic tier is basically free at this point. I don't know if they it will be free after uh, the pandemic is done, but it's at least free during this time period, and it is a um, wonderful alternative in the space. Uh, encourage your interns or require your interns to create a profile on their computer that separates their personal stuff from their work uh, items. This will help with staying on track and focus, but it will also mean that if that's a shared PC in any way, other individuals will not have access to it. Have them put in a, a PIN and identification two-factor authentication so that they can actually get in and other family members may not be able to access that work profile. Create a system for feedback uh, with interns. Uh, first, have a formal system and the handouts include this goal and supervisor agreement from Seattle University um, School of Law. The, one of the reasons I'm highlighting this one is it also has a values-based approach um, being a school that focuses on social justice, some of the things here um, are very useful for also working with the mission and the goals for your organization. Also create informal ways to continue to talk with students and give them feedback. Uh, and it could be part of a, another team meeting. If you have something positive to say about their work product, mentioning it in front of a team or in a casual um, connection that is different from those formal feedback settings, that type of positive reinforcement can help a lot and really make them feel appreciated for the work and time that they're putting in. I also strongly recommend creating a way for feedback to be given anonymously. Almost no legal services organizations do this. And I did not understand the value of this until I created an anonymous feedback way. Incognito is one of those. The, the information that you get from the anonymous feedback can be useful to prevent harassment, to understand if someone is not getting the accommodation that they need to give critical feedback that that individual might not be willing to give um, in a one-on-one -on -one session. So having a way for anonymous feedback, this works especially well if you have lots of interns in your organization 
it does not work if you only have two interns because you're going to figure out exactly who all that feedback is from. So this is highly suggested for larger organizations and have the feedback, anonymous feedback available to all staff also. The types of things people will bring up um, will shock and surprise you. Make sure that the students get involved in continuing legal education um, seminars, especially in this remote time. It can be difficult because we don't have that in-person CLEs that we could just bring interns to. I highly recommend people get involved with the Practice of the Law Institute's free offerings for legal services lawyers. Um, I use these for years at Northwest Justice Project. Um, these are expensive CLEs that are freely available to you and your interns. Um, the link I will put into the chat um, for direct access uh, to this. It's a wonderful, wonderful offering that is out there. Uh, make sure that you've got informal things included in your day to day. Uh, in person, I would always take individuals out for lunch. Um, oh, very hungry. Looking forward to some deep dish pizza later. Uh, the reason that I have Windy City here is they were a sponsor of our social justice game jam um, years ago and one of my favorite places to take interns uh, for lunch. Um, I greatly appreciate that they helped us out with a major event. Um, also, weekly kind of happy hours. This is not about getting together and drinking. It's about having a social time outside of work to have casual conversations. Set those up on your video chat platform and have conversations that are non-work related or informal discussions about work related things. You will learn a lot more about the interests, the motivation, and those type of conversations may lead to you helping them find connections in the community over things that they are passionate about. Don't let the informal go away when you move to the remote work environment because a lot of the learning is informal. So schedule those, have them available. On the informal side, strongly suggest assigning a book and a famous case at the beginning of the internship. Um, with a flexible schedule on when to get to those. Um, some examples are in the family law space. Um, in Washington State, I always assign Troxel v. Granville. It's a US Supreme Court case, but it went all the way up through the Washington State court system. It will give them an idea of what's going on in Washington State, but also kind of a federal um, view on things. For copyright, I always do Campbell v. Acoff Rose Music, famous fair use case, um, but having that kind of um, something interesting to talk about that isn't just their work, that is related to their work, can be a wonderful way to kind of create those stronger connections. Um, on the book side of things, uh, suggest something that is fun, that is relevant, but not necessarily um, directly relevant to their exact cases. Uh, Bound by Law, which is a comic book out of Duke, it's free and available online. I do that for all my copyright individuals. I've suggested The American Jury, which is a classic on looking at how juries work, um, or something that is fun, like Persuasion, which is on psychology and interactions with other individuals. Have your interns share their successes. A blog in some way. It can be scary for organizations to let interns create something that is going to be publicly available and out there, but the best responses that I've gotten from interns later is when people see that those positive things and come back and bring it to them. So for example, this article on modern journal practices, what is being done and what you should do was written by Michael Harris, a ATJ Tech Fellow at Northwest Justice Project working on our um, LSN tab. And individuals at MIE read this and contacted us and talked to us about how to update uh, their journal. And that was a huge positive feedback loop, but it also 
meant that the work that we were doing for one person could help many other people. So get them involved with your um, communications team and take the work that they're doing and turn it into useful resources for the community. It will look awesome on their resume. It will reflect really well on your organization and it's a way to share those successes. So that's what I've got at this point. I'm turning it over to Miguel. I'm gonna check through the questions here also as we pass presenter. Well, uh, I am not gonna regurgitate everything that Sart just said. I'm gonna kind of try to speed through uh, some of the points he mentioned and uh, really give us enough time to open this up for this uh, discussion really quickly. If if anyone's on this call that haven't made the decision uh, to host a student remote, here are some quick advice that I give. You know, definitely follow your your state's uh, social distancing guideline measures. Uh, definitely follow the CDC's public health guidelines and resources. Uh, your organization's remote and work policy. And uh, let's see. So planning activities, again, SART went through a lot of these things in terms of onboarding. But one thing I do suggest is definitely plan that time to, with, you know, to call the student uh, through a virtual chat prior to uh, the start date just to, uh, again, you know, learn more about them. Build trust, uh, you know, build that relationship on a solid foundation. I, I think this time, it's hard for all of us. Organizations are adjusting. Students had to adjust to a numerous things of, of, of taking classes remote, of taking finals remote. Uh, learn more about the students' interests and what they expect to gain over the summer, what their uh, career interests are, uh, and really get a, a sense of their work style. Um, that will really help you over the summer in terms of managing expectations and, and setting those boundaries. Again, uh, planning activities, develop those project outlines prior to. I know they will shift by the time the fellow gets there or the student gets there maybe. You know, SART already went over uh, any work equipment, provide access and credentials. So supervising the student. You know, you know. Overall, it's it's a it's a balance, right? Of of making sure the fellow has you know uh, enough work, uh, making sure they're completing their assignments and doing what they you know are assigned to do, and also on the reverse, providing an enriching experience and an opportunity for for professional growth for the student intern. Um, so definitely keep those con those dual dueling considerations at mind. Um, you know, don't try to overwork. Uh, sometimes as, as, as a lot of folks are adjusting to this new work environment, there could be a sense of uh, not fully understanding the parameters of, uh, you know, how much work to allocate, right? That's where the communication comes in. Um, you know, you wanna balance whether, you know, you don't wanna have the student or student intern idle, but you also don't want to have them overworked. Sometimes a student won't say anything, right? They could. It, it may take you a, a several hours to work on a particular project, but may take them double the time just uh, learning the project when they start out. Uh, so definitely keep that room, keep the room open for communication. Again, I think gaining trust and relationship building is critical as we adjust to this uh, virtual and remote environment. Uh, whereas many of you hosted interns, summer interns in person, and you know they got to see you, <laughs> uh, and and you know a lot of that a lot of that's changed in a remote environment. So I think gaining that trust will definitely help you both in terms of uh boosting work productivity um but also creating a you know less static seamless communication and feedback process uh sart was talking about anonymous feedback uh loops earlier you really want to gain and build a, a 
a, a strong relationship with the student intern where they can bring these sorts of issues to you without fear for retribution. I would definitely also suggest to create some type of uh, anonymous feedback method, but definitely work on gaining that trust and building a solid uh, foundation. Again, work assignments uh, really, uh, as Sark touched on this uh, as well, definitely give the give the student intern context of how how their work product, how their assignments are tied in with your organization's mission and organization's culture. Try to make those explicit ties as they're working on these projects, right? You know, you know, this motion fits in, uh, you know, and, and this particular substantive area of law fits in uh, with in our organization's mission. You know, try to make those explicit ties of how, you know, the work that they do are at enhancing access to justice. You know, students sometimes will have a large uh, or a main assignment. You definitely want to kind of provide smaller, diverse palettes of, of work projects, um, maybe research to really keep them fully engaged. You want you don't want to create a, a monotonous experience for the uh, student. And being that we're in a remote environment, uh, it's it's easy to do that, right? Um, just want to take this time to say, be present in the moment. Again, we're we're in the midst uh, of a pandemic, of a health pandemic. I think it's you know definitely take the time to reflect on on how the fellows doing, uh, how the students doing, how the interns doing, um, ways that you can be there for them. Um, any unique, any unique challenges they may face, uh, both on the project and off the project. Uh, how the work has, you know, uh, increased due to the pandemic. Things to think about. Really, you have to be present in this moment, and you know, it's kind of hard to do that in a virtual uh, atmosphere and environment without the intentionality factor. I think we have a question. Oh. Or, um, so we we definitely had had a few questions here, um, but uh, on kind of different areas. Um, and I just want to let people know we did put a link in the chat to the um, uh, bring your own device policy, and it includes the uh, discussion from the community on updating it or different pieces of that. Um, there was a question, which is for kind of the community here, because I don't know the answer, you may, Miguel, which is, um, is there a way to limit access on a personal device um, to just kind of work-related um, things and, um, and not other programs while they are working? Um, I am not familiar with something like that right off. One of the suggestions that I have for people, though, is if, if they have work machines available that individuals can VPN into, um, that would give them just access to work-related things uh, through that VPN. But I also know that a lot of legal services orgs do not have extra computers um, and rely on interns to bring their computers, especially since um, the number of computers is very short in things like laptops currently as people are working remotely or from home. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of tough. I mean, there are software solutions out there. There are... It, much more expensive and it probably would actually be cheaper to get the student intern their own device. I know that it's definitely uh, a lot of budget constraints to prevent many individuals and organizations from doing so, but it's it's really about establishing that trust uh, with the student intern uh, over the summer. Again, law students are going to be future lawyers. Uh, and they have ethics and, you know, reminding them of their ethics and responsibilities and duties uh, to the position. I think doing that in an explicit manner at the forefront of the experience is is highly uh, encouraged just so that they're, they're not. But, you know, one thing to consider is that, you know, there may be a time where a student gets a, a personal email, right? or 
you know, has to check something during a break. Uh, and so, again, just trying to maintain that balance, right, of, of ensuring a, a safe, secure environment um, and productive environment where the student's doing the work uh, on the required time, but not kind of over, uh, you know, I would say over allocating like the intrusiveness on, you know, that student's device that they're also kind of lending to the organization to complete the work. Uh, so it's just it's just really maintaining a balance. But I think a lot of these conversations and concerns can be uh, answered and um, raised to the surface prior to um, or at the first meeting uh, when you're all setting those uh, work boundaries. Okay. Um, so my next slide is diversity and inclusion. Um, a lot of you will have uh, uh, students, interns from all different backgrounds and experiences. Definitely seek to understand those challenges that you know students from different backgrounds may have. Uh, this is a great way to promote inclusion within your organization. Uh, really think about any, you know, as, as you get to know your student, your intern, uh, as you build trust, um, you know, really think about ways that I can create an inclusive environment, virtual work environment. <laughs> um, and definitely make sure that uh, Sart mentioned a lot of uh, great and helpful tips on uh, accessibility options. Uh, so definitely check into that. If, if, if you sense anything's wrong with the student or the intern, um, and, and make sure to kind of, you know, at least try to suss it out, right? Not everyone has the privilege to have a kind of quiet, safe place to work at their home without any distractions. These are considerations that you should be uh, really thinking about, right? Uh, definitely, if, if those things are, if there's a problem, really try to solve it and, and not create a, a, a place where, uh, you know, the, the student can't come to you about that. Uh, or the intern can't come to you. Really, if there's any problem or solution, definitely try to uh, uns uh, suss it out. If, if there's an opportunity, because um, there's there's tons of barriers. Uh, there's you know as a as a poor law student navigating through law school, I've experienced a lot of these things firsthand, and it was really great folks um, that I worked with, start being one of them, um, who were very understanding and very. Uh, inclusive to the needs of diverse communities. So really keep that on the edge of your head of how ways that I can be, uh, ways to be intentional about uh, these things. Oops, no exposure wrong. Organizational exposure, again. Uh, a quick really note on the last one. I What Miguel is saying there is, is so important. It is really a um, privilege to have private workspace. Um, I've got two interns right now that are entirely remote. One of them is returning um, to work, has multiple kids in the household, and I've added the flexibility to do some meetings um, earlier in the morning while the kids are still sleeping to be able to check in on things and then um, stretch and move those hours around to different times. Uh, just be understanding of the personal situation that an individual is in. It's so important. Yeah. Um, the slide before this was uh, organizational exposure. There are ways to expose your student intern uh, to other aspects of your organization, whether if you're setting up a, a virtual hangout uh, where, you know, it's it's you, the student intern, and several other colleagues, uh, that's that's a great solution. 
uh, if you're inviting that student intern to like an office wide kind of virtual meetup, that's another way to get them uh, uh, exposure. Really try to, so they can have a, just definitely a more conceptual sense of how the organization uh, works, who, who the folks are, who's, who's the leadership team. Uh, these are all great things to kind of uh, supplant the fact that the fellow or the student won't be there in person. Um, again, creating feedback loops. I know Sart uh, makes, uh, touched on this. Uh, he did a really good job and gave it justice. So I won't go into too much detail, but I think there's something to, uh, and this goes back to the point of, of, of being present. Definitely try to uh, not only create uh, feedback loops that offer a heightened level of transparency and authenticity, but definitely let, you know, encourage the student intern throughout uh, the project. Make sure they feel, you know, respected and valued throughout the project. And, 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 and you'll see that that will reciprocate both ways and ultimately uh, build that relationship, that working relationship to get things done. Again, let's make it fun. We have the ability, uh, one of the things that the uh, uh, pandemic and, and shifting to a virtual and remote environment has done is, is we have the ability to innovate create opportunities, uh, you know, brainstorm different creative fun opportunities for professional development and training opportunities. One of the things that we uh, provide uh, within the Tech Fellows Program is blogging challenge, we'll, uh, blogging challenges. We'll, we provide all the fellows blogs, we give them prompts, they research different topics and blogs and, and create blogs, uh, blog posts about them. Um, and, and just thinking of, you know, new, fun, creative ways to make this experience more sticky. I think wellness is a, is a great uh, point to uh, touch on. You know, I, I think this is a challenge not just to, to consider uh, with our student interns over the summer, but for us as well. I think we've all had to really think about in an intentional manner of how we can stay well while adjusting to a virtual and digital work environment, right? Both from time, work time obligations that we've all had are, are trying to balance with family obligations and how those are mixing. Think about all those things for uh, the student intern as well. Keep those uh, at, at the top of your mind. Um, and and definitely uh, you know create spaces for wellness whether it's breathing exercises uh, or uh, other exercises med mindfulness meditation that you're able to create a space that's open um, and that promotes overall wellness practices throughout the summer again start uh, gave this point really a good justice create uh, regular check-ins and feedback loops. Uh, and that is all, I think it was one point that I missed, I failed to put in. Um, and, and that was, you know, definitely, again, all of us have, have had to kind of step up during this time. Uh, I think this time is extremely uh, critical and communities are being affected in so many different ways from the pandemic, whether it's housing, uh, whether it's uh, uh, domestic violence, whether it's uh, debt collection, I think let's all be mindful of those uh, things uh, and activate our student interns uh, to get involved within the community uh, and, and find ways how we can help and, and combat some of these challenges. Uh, that's all I'll leave with. If I have my contact, uh, I'll be sure to share it. But definitely, I'm I'm happy to uh, uh, you know follow up with anyone if they have any questions. Um, I did drop into the chat channel um, a link to the um, Bring Your Own Device policy draft, and it has all of the comments from members of the legal services community. There, you can also make comments to it. Um, it was put together by an ATJ Tech Fellow, Michael Harris, who we mentioned earlier. Um, 
I also dropped in a link to the MIE policy library with regards um, to COVID. I will send them over a few things there to add to that. Last I checked, there were about 45 different policy documents um, that were out there for legal aid organizations. I also dropped a link to the ATJ Tech Fellows um, website in there. Um, and Miguel, feel free to drop um, your email in there also uh, to the chat um, so people can contact you directly with questions. Um, a few last uh, resources here. I strongly recommend that people um, head to lsntap.org, scroll down a little bit on the page, and there is an email list there. Uh, we've picked up about 200 people in the last month and a half. We had 800 people um, going into this year, and we're up to over 1,000 legal services professionals that are sharing best practices. If you ask any question, like, how do I do electronic notary? or what tool do you use for video editing or anything. There will be five or six people on that list that can answer it. it is, there are vendors on that list, but vendors are not there to promote their stuff. Um, it is about community sharing and it is the heart of the legal services um, community. Uh, I will be dropping a link to our YouTube channel here in a second. Also, our next... Um, presentation coming up is on security um, audits, and I will drop the link into the chat also. Um, it's how to do a security audit in your organization, and it's put on um, by the Mid-Florida Legal Services Organization. We have four videos um, already on the remote work stuff, and the link is right there. It's youtube.com forward slash NTAP videos. There are over 250 videos from the last eight years, but there are four specific to remote work that were all created in the last uh, two months from suggestions from the community. This one will be included. The security audit will be included. So it's a wonderful set of resources specific to what we're going through now. Uh, this was put on by Northwest Justice Project, supported by a grant from Legal Services Organization. Um, thank you so much. And thank you, Miguel. I greatly appreciate having you here. 